ஓம் பூணவத பூணவிதம் பூணாத் பூணமுதச்சியத்தே பூணசிய பூணமாதாய பூணமேவாவசிஷ்யத்தோ ஓம் சாந்தி 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 ஓம் பிரம்மானந்தம் பரம் சுகதம் கேவலம் ஜானமூர்த்திம் வத்வாத்தீதம் ககன் சதிஷம் தத்துவமசியாதிலட்சியம் ஏக்கம் நித்தியம் விமலமச்சலம் சர்வீ சாட்சிபூத்தம் பாவாத்தீதம் திருகுணரஹிதம் தத்குரு தம் நமாமி ஓம் எலோடேஷன்ஸ் டு சத்குரு ஹூ இஸ் பிரம்மன் தி கிவர் ஆஃப் சுப்ரீம் பிளிஸ் எம்பாடிமெண்ட் ஆஃப் பியோர் கான்ஷியஸ்னஸ் ஒன் விதவுட் எ செகண்ட் வாஸ்ட் அ தி ஈதர் இன்ஃபினிட் இட்டர்னல் beyond the three gunas and their modifications the supreme precept yoga vashishtha in upsham prakarana you are coming to section 30 and you are being led to the episode of Hiranyakashipu and Prahlad. There's a story of Prahlad, but not the way Bhagavad Puran gives or other scriptures. This is Prahlad, through Prahlad's episode, devotion which is essential for jnana. that type of devotional movement is being described and we will see first to give you a simple introduction to hiranyakashipu of course all these stories are allegorical stories but hiranyak hiranya means gold gold term is used in scriptures in two ways gold that is a base source of your greed see that's why golden deer came to lure sita that gold of the good deer was not the gold of god so so that type of gold based greed was his armor that was hiranyakashipu and his son he had many sons but one son prahlad had a a special type of story when hiranyakashipu was practicing austerity this all these rakshasas when they described they have they are told in the story line they suddenly decide to go into a sustained pra- practice in a story line if they suddenly stand on dhruva pose they will stay on for years unshaken the story line the idea behind it the negative quality in in a person goes on growing day by day whether you believe with his or no one foot or not that doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> and all positive things that happen they sh- try to shake it but if the negative is very strong it will not be shaken if that has happened you get hiranyakashipu type of demoniac lower self dominating you but coming back to story line when hiranyakashipu was doing that austerity indra tried to distract him 
Indra is always afraid that his Swarga, his heavenly realm will be taken away by the demon. So Indra kidnapped his wife and led the wife through the area where he was doing all that austerity. Even the cries of his wife didn't distract him. Indra then took that queen, Hiranyakshipu's, Hiranyakshipu's wife, and placed it in Narada's ashram in a, in a heavenly realm. So, and this wife was pregnant and gave birth to a baby, but even while she was with baby in the womb, Narada gave talks of higher things, of bhakti and jnana. And the baby received that education called prenatal education. <laughs> <laughs> I was born as a devotee. Later, when he was brought back, Hiranyakashipu was so frustrated because this baby was a grown-up boy, was expounding all glory of Vishnu and divine qualities. Hiranyakashipu became so angry with him, he wanted to destroy. He did many things, but Hiranyakshipu survived. Among many things, his own sister was Holika, who had the boon that she cannot be, she was immune to fire. She took Prahlad in her arms, tricking him, and then the whole thing was set on fire. But to the amazement of, of the world, Holika was burnt up <laughs> and Prahlad survived. Therefore we, we say holy hai. And therefore that holy term has gone all over the world. The students wait for the holy days. <laughs> <laughs> And great personalities are his holiness. <laughs> so these are very profound episodes with deeper meanings. Shiva Shishta continued, O Rama, listen to an effective method of attaining spiritual wisdom. It is a method of devotion which removes all obstacles on the path leading to enlightenment. And was the method adopted by Prahlad, son of demon king Hiranyakashipu. One time in Patala, the nether world, Patala term refers to deep unconscious. There arose a mighty demon known as Hiranyakashipu. By his immense valor, he defeated the gods and rival demons, and having ousted Indra from his celestial throne, became the unobstructed mon monarch of the three worlds. As time passed, he was endowed with many sons, and am among them was Prahlad, who later became a famous devotee of Lord Vishnu. Hiranyakshipu tormented the gods, sages, saints to an extreme degree. You must know these are allegorical stories, the reply, it relates to every individual. Hiranyakashipu in you is an aspect of ignorance. Ignorance that dominates the three worlds. Thought, word and action. The world, the plane of thinking, understanding. 
the plane of speaking. Speaking relates also to the heart, because what is the heart that talks out fast, not the head. <laughs> Thought, word, and action. So, people live in three lokas. The world of action, practical reality. The world of your feeling, sentiments. And the world of your understanding. These three are blended together in every individual. Ignorance, Hiranyakashipu, dominates all the three. And who counteracts him ultimately is the Prahlad movement, Bhakti movement. His increasing oppression became so unbearable to the gods that they appro approached Lord Brahma asking for help. At the request of Brahma, Lord Vishnu incarnated as a Narasimha. The incarnation of Lord Vishnu to destroy Hiranyakshipu, the allegorical meaning, meaning behind it, that in every personality, every personality is a, has a potentiality for purushartha, self-effort. When self-effort blends with grace, Narasingha arises within. Narasingha literally means Nara is human, Singha is a lion. Your ordinary effort without satsanga, etc., mind that is just worldly, then all your effort is nar, human. But when shraddha-based spiritual movement commences within you, then soul, strength emanating from your soul, reaches to a great height. And it is compared to lion strength. So, lion and human, self-effort blended with grace. Self-effort that is very advanced, that's Nara. And grace blended with it, Singha, Nara Singha. Now, just to give you a poetic view, is Narasingha, his arms are of Samadhi. He has the strength of Vairagya, Paravairagya, supreme dispassion. His nails are Viveka, discriminative knowledge, he scratches out. So that type of a spiritual movement enters in human personality. And there, thereby, ultimately, he tears down Hiranyakshipu, ignorance, and enfolds Prahlad, devotion to God, in his arms. And all this time, the immense energy that was emanating from, from Narsingha, Lord Shiva sustained, he himself laid down, and Vishnu performed all that on his support. Storyline. The support of Shiva is Tattvagyan. Purushartha, Tearing out ignorance, supported by tattva knowledge of the Absolute. That's. At the request of Brahma, Lord Vishnu incarnated as Narasimha, a terrible form of half human and half lion. This mighty incarnation 
had the face of a lion with teeth shining like lightning bolts and blazing claws of destruction. His entire body was effulgent and every movement seemed to shatter the firmaments. With the advent of Lord Narsingha, the city of the demons was burned to ashes. City of the demons, all the karmas. Hmm. And Hirandyakeshipu was destroyed in a terrible battle. Prahlad, the wisest son of Hirandyakeshipu, then ascended the throne of the kingdom. Having witnessed the might of Lord Vishnu, Prahlad was dumbfounded at his terrible form and reflected thus, just as a mighty monkey shakes down the best fruits that grow on a tree, even so this mighty Lord Hari repeatedly destroys the best of demons. Whose support should I seek? Who is there to give me refuge? There is no one mightier than Lord Vishnu. So Parhalad comes to that, that understanding. This is the basis for devotional movement, healthy devotional movement. And what is that basis? Whose support? You look at the world. You are on shaky grounds. Earth can't support you. It's a birth effort. Earth itself is moving in space. Your body can't support you. You don't even want to see your picture through X-ray. <laughs> the whole world perceived through your brain. How? Who supports that? And what, who is the support behind all that? If that is so, then in, let us start surrendering to that support. That which is the reality behind all this, put it in a very simple way, there are countless illuminations, countless reflected suns, they are all in shaky ground. Who supports ultimately all their presence? Sun. The mind has to work out that type of understanding. And that understanding becomes more mature, more pakka, as your devotion goes on developing towards God. To make it still easy, try to figure out whom do you love most in this world. And the answer is Atmanastu Kamaya Sarvam Priyam Bhavati. You love all the world because of your own identity. The first thing that you dearly love is you, yourself. Now therefore try to understand who am I? And if that allows you to have a little inkling that your reality is God. Now, therefore, love for God ultimately matures into revelation of who am I. God and I am are one and the same. So, first stage to discover that the world is transient. 
and your own personality is is mortal that ultimately whose support can you really look for course if the mind is too busy then it question does not arise <laughs> that then you are creating karmas and karmas will lead you to countless embodiments and it is it is such a miserable project to stay with karma having the potentiality to attain enlightenment as a human being that's the blessing to be a human being having that potentiality not to take advantage of it and stay with karmic process that's a miserable development so now coming to the question if you have developed that certain sensitivity and you are looking for absolute support support that cannot be shaken the answer is god within you he who is antaryami in the indweller in all and that indweller dwells within your own heart and he is the one shining through all things of this world he is the creator sustainer and destroyer of the universe there is no one equal to him in this world let me therefore take recourse to japa of the divine mantra om namo narayanaya so devotional movement requires mantra mantra being you opens the door to spiritual ascent manana trayate iti om namo narayana i will give you a simple understanding every mantra has a literal meaning and meaning actual meaning that applies and helps you is the root letter based meaning every letter in the mantra has its special meaning not not only ordinary meaning it's based on how sound touches different nerve centers in your personality that's the psychology behind all literature certain things are expressed in all languages if you are very joyous ha ha <laughs> no language stops it <laughs> no one says do it in spanish <laughs> no <laughs> do it in arabic <laughs> but when you come to complex operations of your feeling lots of sound pattern is brought into literature all things that are vigorous war type heroic you will find lot of r and co- hard consonants in them things that are cozy and joyous in a warm and loving setting lali mere lal ki that type of thing it requires very vowels and consonants that that resound totally in a different way so among leading you into all those who understand that on that basis sages evolved it's super science 
if the mind is allowed to follow certain pa pattern of sound again and again and again, just following it, even without your knowing what it means, just like Om, 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 whether you know it meaning or not, you breathe in and say Om and see how it harmonizes all your, and I will do once, once or two times. Oh. has a har harmonizing effect on all your vital forces. And Om is the mother of all mantras. All that you can say is from the throat and the lips. And with A, throat opens, lips, M closes. And even while all this happens, the ultimate result is beyond called the fourth of Om, transcendental. That Om is Brahman, the Absolute. Namo comes two root letters, Na and Ma. Nama. And that all these sages brought it in Hindu culture in such a way that in common parlance people talk about Nama, Namaste, Shri, and all types of, these are all mantras. When we greet anybody saying Nama, you are recognizing God within yourself and God within the person. And you are asserting nothing belongs to me. Nama. Nothing is mine. Nothing exists, nothing belongs to me. God alone is. That's asserted in every time one adores. So every mantra is has that nama. That's the purpose behind the mantra negation of the ego self. Na, Narayanaya, the Na, first Na, is the negation of impurities of the mind. The Hindi word takes hubrasri, calls it Na Na. Nana impurities. <laughs> Nana means negate it, negate it, negate it. <laughs> Multiplicity is called Nana. <laughs> it's a bundle of negations. So that's Na. Ra na, awakening of his spiritual potentiality. Ra, in fact, is Rama. Ya relates to root letter of the heart. But in order to go to the core of your heart, you have to go through seven steps jnana bhumikas, ascending steps. So the first na, first ra, rather, yeah. yes. Na ra, ra is awakening of spiritual potentiality. Ya, two ya comes in the Narayanaya. First ya, Away, ascending steps of wisdom. If you are heartward movement, it has seven steps. First, just to give you a enumerated, Shubhacha, aspiration. 
Don't stay with perspiration. <laughs> Start asking, what should I, should we do to get inner fulfillment, real fulfillment? And then you begin to develop certain spiritual qualities, vivek, vairagya, and all that detail I'm not giving you at this stage, but shubhachadat, aspiration, real hunger for spiritual enrichment. Next state, vicharada. Mind becomes deeply involved. You must realize mind has, has the secret behind all your experiences. So as you practice vichar, allow your mind to understand who am I. Shubhicha, vicharana, tanu manasi. Tanu manasi means your subtle desires called vasanas, they are becoming purified. As they become purified, your negative qualities begin to dwindle. Anger, hate, greed. All these, they thin out, lose their obesity. <laughs> they are on diet. <laughs> but Tanu Mahanasi is not the end, because they will start taking the diet again and <laughs> become <laughs> fatter than before. <laughs> so, <laughs> fourth state is called Sattva Patti. Now your understanding has become so clear. Just like first the clouds were veiling the sun and you couldn't see anything. Now clouds have opened some channels, you are beginning to see and not only see, you begin to see the cloud itself becoming a display of sun's glory. Instead of obstructing it, cloud is displaying the glory. The very same mind that was obstructing now begins to display. That comes in a progressive way. And when you come to fourth state, is no longer display, there is a revelation. It's, even though the clouds are still there, you have a complete revelation, a complete understanding, the sun alone is real. Now from this, if you have come to that stage, you are Jivan Mukta, liberated, because you have no way you can go backward, because this is not, in, not a academic study that you can just forget it. <laughs> the fourth, fifth state is called Asam Sakti. If you come to that stage of internal illumination, now cannot create new karmas. Your personality is led by old karma, prarabdha. And I'm not going to detail. But whatever karma, your, your inner understanding, you are untouched. You are like the sky. No matter whatever clouds, you have no contradiction with them. The sky welcomes all types of clouds negative ones, positive ones, etc. You begin to see all you that you experience is handled by your consciousness. You are that consciousness. All that you experience, they are not going to destroy you. That consciousness is the sky. And your I that was ego level has gone into higher level. 
From ego level, you have surrendered. Higher level, you have discovered, I am that. So, you go through two levels. I am nothing. I am Brahma. And next stage comes Padartha Bhavana. The entire world is Padartha. Entire world is an act of act of matter. Here matter means here referring to Tamasi Prakriti. And the entire world becomes negated. Easy way to understand. When you go to sleep, the entire world goes away from you. Now don't miss it at all. But that world comes back again and again because you have not removed ignorance. Here, even though you are awake, you are doing all activities better than before, dynamic personality like Shankaracharya, at higher level, absolutely asleep. The world is nothing but Brahman. Siya, Ramaya, Sabjagajani. And that awareness remains pakka. That's the real. Anything else is illusion. And when you have come to that state, now comes to the seventh, which is not to talk about it. <laughs> Goes beyond all description. So as I was talking about the mantra, Om Brahman, Namo Nama, negation of the sense of mindness. Na, negation of impurities of the mind. Ra, awakening of spiritual potentiality. Ya, ascending steps of wisdom. Again comes Na, The na term here is not ordinary n. Ordinary n is negation. But the n that resounds with special frequency, na, <laughs> the languages have difficulty with the na. <laughs> you can't bring it in this English language. <laughs> You have to make direct rehearsal how it is pronounced. <laughs> All your teeth show up. <laughs> that <laughs> Krishna. <laughs> that relates to absolute bliss. First you say softly, na. <laughs> you are in this early stage. I am not understood. <laughs> neti, neti, not this, not this. Not this. <laughs> At the higher level, ananda. The world is negated, nothing but bliss. Na. And the last letter, ya. This another ya refers to now the core of your heart. Your heart has become illumined. Om Namo Narayanaya. So when you know the meaning along with it, now your mantra has become a basis for your higher practice. And you bring more feeling with it, the mantra be begins to bring out a special strength called Mantra Chaitanya and begins to work wonders beyond your imagination. 
and mantra can be recited, vocal, whispering, mental. Vakari, Upanshu, Manasi. And you use according to your mood. All, all this is, has a, its effect. Mental has a profoundest effect. But simply by knowing the mental will give you the greatest benefit. You should not ignore the vocal. Because it is the vocal practice that will lead you to deeper mental level. Otherwise you will be neither here nor there. <laughs> so, this is what Prahlada began. The word Prahlada itself Ahalad means joy. And Prahalad is a special type of joy. So let me therefore take the course Japa of the mantra Om Namo Narayana and meditate upon Lord Vishnu. Let me meditate upon the fact that Lord Vishnu is all this. No matter whoever is your Ishta Devata, Ishta Devata is one and absolute. Different names of Ishta Devata, different forms, at different angles. Shouldn't be surprised. Everyone can have hundreds of pictures, photos taken by your near and dear ones. And you will find everyone chooses a special pose of yours. You have no contradiction about it. <laughs> they are all worshipping the same. So whether you are worshipping Narayana, Rama, Krishna, Devi, Saraswati, Ganesha, Guru, you are worshipping the same. Brahman. The mind should not hold any type of contradiction about it. And that Ishta, being Brahman, is all this. If Rama is your Ishta, then Rama is shining. Rama is the flowers. His praise is being sung by birds. And likewise with Sani, Krishna is everywhere. Kankana me Krishna Vyapta. Krishna is in every particle. Raja Raja me Ram Vyapta. In every particle of sand, even is permeated by Rama. Now, Lord Vishnu. He experiences and his mind has gone into higher level of ecstasy. Lord Vishnu is the directions. He is the sky. He is the earth. He is all that exists. He is the spirit in me. I am essentially Lord Vishnu. Here Bhakti has gone to very high level. It's called Amgraha Upasana. When you meditate, do worship. You can continue to view the deity separate from you. But there is higher level of Upasana where you begin to Meditate upon I am. You are meditate if your deity is Ganesha, I, I am Ganesha. Your deity is Vishnu, I am Vishnu. Your deity is Shiva, I am Shiva, Shivoham, Shivoham. 
सच्चिदानंद स्वरूप हो डोंट थिंक दट शिवाल बिकम बिकम एंग्री गॉड इज योर रियलिटी ऑलवेज रिमेंबर वॉट रामायण आर प्रेजेंटेड वेन रामा आस हनुमान हाउ एम आई रिलेटेड टू यू देह बुद्धिया तो दासो हम वेन यू आर आई वर्किंग विद द वर्ल्ड यूजिंग योर बॉडी बॉडी आइडेंटिटी इज इंपॉर्टेंट डोंट व्यू इट इज माई बॉडी इज यू आर जस्ट अ चैनल ऑफ गॉड दासो हम टर्म इज लिटरल मीनिंग दास slave but i have explained to you das means i am drawing from god three types of da dama control of mind dan charity daya compassion god is giving me these three nourishment three tonics If you develop that idea, you are das. See, saintly person is too shy das, rare das, so many das. Mm-hmm. And jiva buddhya padansh padanshaka. From the point of view of your jivatma, the soul that moves from body to body, led by karma, that soul is a ray of God. it has the potentiality of emulating god's qualities it can make a sport with god <laughs> that is a profound implication implying you can go on developing divine qualities and there is no limit for it you are a ray of god then ultimate atma buddhya tavaiva the real source within you is the same as ram same as brahman all these three must blend and then you are in integral practicing integral yoga mind should not become calculative that i will choose which one i have to follow you cannot choose you can't choose between your heart and head <laughs> which one to follow <laughs> they all go together lo i am the all pervading per- pervading self i am seated on the garuda bird that shines with golden luster my arms are adorned with celestial ornaments my hands hold the four divine articles mace discus lotus kanch Goddess Lakshmi, the goddess presiding over prosperity and victory, abides with me as my eternal consort. You have a good family now. <laughs> I'm joking. The idea. <laughs> the Maya of Lord Vishnu that creates all the worlds is under my control. If you are I am Vishnu, the Vishnu controls his Maya. If you are Brahman, all Maya-based reality is under control. In fact, even the word "control" doesn't mean anything. It doesn't exist. I am Lord Vishnu, Brahma, the Creator, arose out of my navel. I am the sustainer of all that is created. the earth is my feet 
the sky is my head, the three words my body. Now handle it. <laughs> I am verily Lord Vishnu, the destroyer of the forces of darkness. There is no one in the three worlds who can stand against me. Can you bring that type of shout in your heart? <laughs> but that's the real spirituality. Discovering who am I? And this is the bhakti in a very advanced stage. Real bhakti is to to discover, to realize the truth. Bhakti is love for truth. And this is how what bhakti should do. Lead you to un understand, I am. The under your I am is the one that creates all your mental set. How are you? No matter whatever happening in the world, still people ask you, how are you? <laughs> Your mind defines you. <laughs> the enlightened mind understands I am all that is. Aham Brahma. And that all that is again is the palabra. Brahman alone is. Brahma, Indra, the fire god, Shiva, and all other divinities offer adorations to me. Just like the sun, we have to say, all illuminations, they offer adorations to me. Allegorical. My glory is boundless like the ocean. I am the dispeller of grief and fear from the hearts of my devotees. Those who become devoted in their heart, all this, all the negative moves away. And I will hold off at this stage. Mm -hmm. Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvar Bandhanan Mrityor Mukshyama Amritat Am Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyant Makashti Dukabhag Bhavet Om Shanti 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 Om Shri Ramayana Hari Om Shri Ramayana Hari Om